engineering is important because of society. It's a business, but business runs on the need of society, the benefit that society would want to, or we all expect society to get out of business. That is what make or makes business run. And you do agree with me that if mining has no benefit to people, um, then of course you don't have any business mining. We are mining because we need gold. We need the precious metal to make our lives easier. Um, the watch you have, the phone you use, all the gadgets around us have somehow some amount of precious metal in it. So it's about people. And the conversation even goes beyond what we get out of it as a product. But how do citizens and people benefit in the business as we run it? And I think with mining, it becomes even more critical because the activity, as far as mining is concerned, uh, directly impact on people. So it's important we talk about how mining um, coexists with the people who are directly impacted by their activities. So I'm sharing with you, I think my task is the, is the easiest one. I could have even closed my eyes and said it because I'm just going to share with you um, I experienced as Anglo Gold Ashanti. Okay, so I'll quickly run through the presentation, um, basically touching on who we are as Anglo Gold Ashanti, some of you may know, and um, look at our sustainability strategy. Remember, we're talking about corporate social responsibility and community engagement. And our corporate social responsibility community engagement are embedded within our sustainability strategy. And then I'll talk about stakeholder engagement as a key function, especially with how complexity of Boise as a mine is. And then touch on our social management plan and then share with you our thoughts going forward. This, I believe, would do very well in helping you to appreciate what it means to talk about corporate social responsibility and community engagement in Anglo Gold Ashanti. So Anglo Gold Ashanti, as you know, is um, a global multinational. We operate in 10 countries um, in three continents. Uh, we have a number of greenfield um, operations and then Brownfield as well. We are currently the third um, gold producer globally uh, by ounces produced. The Obuasi mine um, is one of the two mines of Anglo Gold Ashanti in Ghana. Anglo Gold Ashanti has two operations in Ghana, one in Takwa, the Idwepre mine. Uh, is there someone here from UMAT? Studying at UMAT? Okay. Um, so we have one operation, a very small, medium-sized operation in the western region in Takwa. And then we have Obuasi, which is the old giant. Uh, many people in Ghana, uh, in the mining industry, have gone through uh, Anglo Gold Ashanti. Uh, I think early this year, we were in a forum like this, a very big forum, uh, the Ghana Mining and energy awards, and we have the three big players there, Goldfields, Newmont, and Anglo Gold. Goldfields and Newmont, of course, Gold, currently Newmont is the largest producer in Ghana, uh, followed by Goldfields. And because of Boise wasn't producing any dual prim, it happened to be a very small mine. Cumulatively, our production in Ghana as a company was, was, was low. Um, or has been low. So the big players were talking. But then one of the things that we could all say for a fact that even all those talking for Goldfields and um, Newmont, I mean, went through Anglo Gold Ashanti. And, and it's, it's, it's something that we pride ourselves in to see how we're contributing to 
the human capital development in Ghana. If you travel across the region, even outside Ghana, you would find someone who have been developed by Anglo Gold Ashanti, probably as an employee who is working out there. So we have the Obuasi mine, um, which is a very old mine in Ghana. Um, the Obuasi mine has a very peculiar sociopolitical um, landscape, um, which, it, which makes it quite exciting to talk about community relations. <coughs> The Obuasi mine, um, I think you all know Obuasi is in the Shanti region. So Obuasi, because of, of where we sit, uh, we work closely um, with the palace. So we are under the Ashanti kingdom. And Obuasi um, has about 59 communities. Previously, we have about close to, 60, close to 70 communities. And this is so because the number of communities have reduced because um, in 2014, we took, took a bold decision to relinquish 60% of our total concession back to government. And so this, in principle, reduces the number of communities that we have to support or respond to. So currently, we have 59 communities. Some of them are within the 40% uh, remaining uh, concession. And some of them are, even though outside the concession, but we still have some legacy issues that we have to deal with. So we still look after these communities. And um, politically, we sit with one, I mean, five political, six political administrations, one municipality, and five districts. And we have 46 assembly men. One thing I forgot to really, I mean, to mention to you to start with is it's important you are engineers if you find yourself working in the industry um, in whatever capacity. It's important you appreciate the sensitivity um, of managing these communities or working with these communities. Um, Dr. Tony Oben did mention social license. And until recently in Ghana, we didn't understand what social license is. And social license is something you can never go and find on the shelf. You can never go, you cannot hire any intelligent person to give you social license. It is earned. So you earn it. You can buy it. And that is why talking about communities, talking about social partners, talking about stakeholders, especially in the extractive industry, is critical. So Obuasi has a very complex stakeholder landscape. Um, I have worked in our Takwa mine for a number of years, and if I compare the number of stakeholders and the stakeholder groupings that we have to work with in Takwa, um, it doesn't come anywhere near um, what we have to contend with in Obuasi. If you want to organize a stakeholder forum, um, which involves your chiefs and elders, already you have 46 assemblymen, and you have 59 chiefs, 59 queen mothers, and then on top of that, you talk of the divisions. And Obuasi is very complex. It's like a mosaic kind of fabric. Um, so in Obuasi, you have a piece of land here which belongs to, let's say, a Kokeri division. And just close to that land, the other piece of land belongs to New Edubiasi division. So you have to be very, very sensitive even moving between the lands and ensuring you are talking to the right person. So it is very, very, very important. Um, other mining jurisdiction, other mining companies in Ghana don't actually experience this. Uh, but Boise, it's very, very important. So we have four traditional divisions. We have two paramounties, Amansia and Adansi. This is just to give you some soft information with regards to how Boise um, is when we talk about mining. But let me talk about why I'm here. So, this is Obuasi, and this is what we are doing. And Obuasi, we know, has a long history of a relationship with communities um, in a very, very different forms. Obuasi Township evolved. I'm an, I'm an Adansi. I'm from the area. And Obuasi wasn't 
a traditional town. That is why all our divisions are outside of Boise. You have Ayas, you have Formula, you have all those places outside of Boise. But because of the mind, and I presume Dr. Tony is not here, and a professor is here, he's a Takwa person. Uh, Takwa is also the same. So the Wasafi Yase sits at Benso. And even though Takwa, 90% of the land is under Apinto, Apinto sits far away. So that has been, I mean, the characteristic of our mining communities. Just recently, in Newmont, Achim, and half where you find critically indigenous communities where mining is taking place. But previously, it's rather the communities which chase the mine. So Abuasi community evolved because of the mining community. So we have a mixed kind of relationship that exists between us and the mine. But in the redevelopment phase, what we are critically faced with, which I'll present it here as a challenge, are two. Uh, one is the, what we call the resurgence of illegal mining activities within the mine concession. And I'm using illegal act mining activities in quote because it is believed that there is no illegal mining activities in Ghana. Don't quote me anywhere. Um, what we are seeing in Obuase is what the government called the community mining scheme or program. I think you know of it. Okay. So that's a government initiative to address the, I mean, the small-scale mining challenges we have. Um, so we have community mining, and part of the community mining activities, you know, are on our 40% concession. And it is law in Ghana that if even you are a registered mining company, you cannot do your business on someone else's concession. And if you do that, it makes you illegal. So that is how we define the illegal mining activities. And we in Obuasi have said that if this continue, and we know Obuasi, one of the challenges we had in Obuasi, when we went, we put the activities on hold and went on care and maintenance, was illegal mining operations. You might have even heard of fatalities that we recorded in Obuasi as a result of illegal mining in Kershaw. So we have made a decision to say that if we have another illegal mining invasion, we will stop our operation. And this is something we have said openly. And we believe the government is aware of this and is doing as much as they can to support us. But we are managing this through the collaboration with the state security and we believe it would not become a problem. Another critical challenge we have in Obuasi is a high community expectation. You know, when Obuasi went back, we all saw, I mean, people who live in Obuasi who are familiar with Obuasi, saw how it impacted. I've even told marriages even started collapsing uh, because uh, economic activities came to a standstill. People migrated out of Obuasi. So Obuasi became somehow a ghost town. So with the mining coming back, um, not only from us, but anyone who advocated for the coming back of Obuasi, mine, wherever he is to we say that Obuasi man is coming, let's pray for Obuasi man to come back so that you get jobs, so that you get business opportunities. Now Obuasi man is back. So what have we done? We have created expectations. So on a daily basis, if I tell you right now, I was on LinkedIn and I have received about 15 requests for jobs. I don't know whether we look for jobs on LinkedIn. And that is only on LinkedIn. The number of people who come to me, who come to my office, across all, I mean, levels of our management, those who want to do business, um, want to find business to do with their mind, um, and these are all issues that we have to manage. But we manage this from a group philosophical point of view. As an Anglo Gold Ashanti, we have a group philosophy for sustainability. And this we call the sustainability vision. It's basically to ensure that whilst we stabilize the business, whilst we try to uh, grow the business, um, and we make the business sustainable, we think about our communities. And this actually aligns with my personal philosophy that businesses should make positive impact on the life they touch. And this sits core uh, within the Anglo Gold Ashanti um, sustainability vision. So we would want to ensure that through other inputs, which we require to go through the chain to produce the output, 
we ensure that we leave some positive um, imprint in our communities. And this we have translated into a site-specific sustainability strategy. And the strategy looks at three critical things. But basically, if you put all this together, it seeks to contribute to building resilient, self-sustaining communities. And in doing that, we believe it will give us our social license. So we don't run after our social license. But we run after ensuring the communities are better off in our own small way. And remember, we are a mining company. We don't know how to do development. We know how to mine. So whatever we do, we do to contribute to development in line with all the frameworks that exist. And for us to do this, first of all, we have to mitigate all our impact and risk. We have to identify our impact. We have to identify our business risk, our social, our social risk, and put in place measures to mitigate them. And then... Because we are an international company, we do have international, we do have our own standards. But we also have to ensure that we do what is known to be best practice. And for that, we talk of compliance. And on top of that, we talk of enhances. If we have mitigated our impact, we have remained compliant to our own philosophies, our own standards. What then? We need to ensure that our presence there enhances the quality of life of the people. Okay, so first of all, we talk of social risk mitigation, social impact mitigation. We talk about group management standard compliance. We talk about our social management plan and public visibility. So the two legs, last legs, is what we consider to be our enhancer um, framework. So moving away from the strategy, um, what does stakeholder engagement mean or community engagement mean to us? I've already established that at Oboasi, uh, engaging with your stakeholders is critical because we have a very complex stakeholder landscape. We have a very complex stakeholder landscape. And why you need a special set of skills to manage this discipline is that the community space is complex. And in Obuas, it's even more complex. People have considered communities have to be homogeneous in nature. So you probably have the same group of people living in the community. Or if you have a number of communities, they expect that all of them behave the same. It's never happened. Communities are heterogeneous in nature. So within the same community, you have people with different interests. You have people with different aspirations. You have some of them who are a risk to you, some of them who are opportunity to you. So your stakeholder engagement strategy should um, analyze this environment critically so you'll be able to position yourself to reduce your risk whilst optimizing the opportunities that your stakeholder group present to you. But let me quickly run through what we call our corporate social responsibility. In Anglo Gold, we don't, corporate social responsibility is considered vague. It is everything about how you live your life. It's even how the, I drive through the community is considered a responsibility, a corporate social responsibility. And so for us to be able to manage that discipline very well, we prefer using different terms. So in Obuasi, we have formulated what we call a social management plan, which is supposed to be our corporate social responsibility blueprint. What we follow, uh, working with our stakeholders to ensure that the mining benefit is actually seen in the lives of our people. This strategy has four key main pillars. One is support for our sustainable development units. The other one is localization. One is investment promotion. And the last one is growing or improving business linkages. And these are aligned with the sustainable development goals and are pursued from a shared value point of view. 
So corporate social responsibility is not a philanthropy. It's not, I want to do good. It is something that inures benefit to you as an operation. Of course, as you meet in the needs and aspiration of the communities, you also have to think of your sustainability. And that is the shared value approach we adopt to corporate social responsibility. Um, so when you talk of the sustainable development units, before Anglo Gold or Boise Mine went under care and maintenance, we were the only man in Ghana which was doing everything for ourselves. We had a carpentry shop which prepares coffin. We had a forestry. Uh, we had everything. So Obuasi Mine was everything by itself. And all these people were working for the mine. The mine, a mine which is not making profit. So in 2014, we took a strategic decision to say that let us close all these non-cooperations which do not have direct benefit to our operation. But those we consider critical, let's probably put them together as separate entities which will become subsidiary to us. And those are the ones we refer to as a sustainable development unit. So we have the Community Trust Fund. We have the Anglo Gold Ashanti Hospital, which has become Health Foundation. We have our Malaria Control Program. And we have the Anglo Gold Ashanti Schools. These provide service to us, but they are set up as independent entities which are benefiting the community. The Anglo Gold Ashanti Basic School is the high best school in the Ashanti region. And we are currently aiming at probably becoming the, high, the best in Ghana. And about 80% of the students are from Obuasi. They are non-mine employee wards. Our health foundation, currently about 80% of the people who appear at the outpatient department are from Obuasi Township, who are not related to anglo Ashanti employees. Our malaria control program continues to make significant impact uh, Obuasi. Uh, malaria burden has reduced drastically. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we were judged the best corporate responsibility, corporate social responsibility project for the year at the Ghana Mining Industry Awards through the Malaria Control Program. So there is something that these, a lot that these sustainable development units are doing. Uh, in terms of business linkages, we, we touch on um, I think at a point this morning, we touch on building capacities. Um, so, Obuasi Mine is working with our stakeholders, and we're setting up what you call an enterprise development center to grow small businesses in Obuasi who will be able to participate in our supply chain. But we are looking beyond our supply chain so that they will be able to exist even beyond the life of mine. And so, we are working with a strategic partner, Invest in Africa which has a footprint in the whole of Africa. And they have a database which they manage and try to get businesses for these um, small, small companies. Currently, 800 businesses have been enrolled on this, and we're taking them through a one-year journey. Uh, we're also taking an advantage of supporting the people to do what they do and do best. And Obuasi being a traditional community, farming is key. So we, an AGA, Anglo Gold Ashanti used to have farm. So we have about 200 acres of land, which was the company's farm. And all the farmers were Anglo Gold employees. We cannot continue to run mine like that. So now the farm is actually run by private entities who are working with communities as farm, hold, farm holders. So the community households have plots of land and they grow and sell to this business entity, which is driving um, the project from the marketing point of view. In terms of investment promotion, when in 2014, one of the things we did when we put the mine under care and maintenance was to reduce our footprint. If you go to Obuasi, everywhere in Obuasi town, you find Anglo Gold footprint. Our housing infrastructure is scattered the whole place. So one of the decisions we took was to offload some of them. Some of them we had to relinquish back to government. So we reduce our footprint. It becomes an area we can easily contain. So most of the infrastructure, north area, which would not become used for our operation at the time in the future, was relinquished to government. And through a strategic conversation I was discussing with Prof, 
we decided that we will establish a KNUSC campus in Oboase. So as I speak with you, there is an Oboase campus of KNUSC. And the plan is that The plan is that it becomes, in future, it becomes an autonomous university. And it's something I'm pushing very hard. I think the last time we heard of this was Vets University in South Africa. And this is the first time through a mining um, company effort, we are seeing an academic institution of this caliber. We are working very hard to establish it as a first-class university, which will run specific, I mean, specific programs for the mining industry. So currently we have 350 students in the school and they are using our mine infrastructure. We also give money to, to the municipal assembly to refurbish the infrastructure so that it will become useful to them. Um, currently we are working on housing. We have a number of housing units and through our trust fund we want to refurbish the housing units so that students can use as hostel. We are doing this because we want to diversify the economy of Oboasi. We want to reduce total dependence on the mine. It didn't help us. And that's why when we went under care maintenance, Obuasi totally collapsed. So the new thinking is that we should just act as a catalyst to speed up the developmental process in Obuasi. And that can be done only if we contribute to diversifying the economy. We are also helping to strengthen institutions. The picture you see on top is the uh, matriculation for the KNUST campus. The one at the bottom, we gave two brand new pickups to the Obuasi police. We are working with all other institutions to strengthen their capacity so that they can deliver quality service to the people of Obuasi. Um, still under investment promotion, just yesterday, I launched a trade show. Uh, we want to kind of bring a euphoria in Obuasi where people, at least every Christmas, people will move to Obuasi. So I launched a trade show, which is running for six days. A, a number of traders um, have come together, and we have a number of people coming in there. We believe that through this, um, sales will be enhanced. And lastly, to look at, at localization, um, Obuasi Mine is, we're doing our best. So from localization, we're looking, we're looking at employment how to encourage community participation and employment. And then we're also looking at uh, businesses. So we are using the enterprise development as a vehicle to promote participation. Okay. Uh, but on top of that, if you talk of participation as Ghana local, um, about 85% of our current project spent is paid to locals. Uh, locals, I'm talking about Ghana. Some of them are local multinational. Some of them are local, local. And we are one of the mining companies which have encouraged a JV anywhere. For instance, if you come to our underground mining, no local company have the capacity and the scale we're looking for. So we found a foreign company, and we said that we want to drive local content. So for us to accept you to work with us, we want you to form a JV with a local company which may not have the capacity, but probably doing similar work elsewhere. And so for our mining contractor, we have 30% local ownership and 70% foreign. This is true. We find it in a number of operational um, areas, the contract that exists. So we are doing our best to encourage local participation. And in terms of employment, we have a robust system we are implementing to ensure that the locals benefit from the mining. So currently... 58% of our new highs, remember Obuasi, we have all the employees who came on, those who didn't go during the care and maintenance, so those were maintained, and there are new ones which were added. And for the new ones which came or which have come, 58% are from our host communities. And with our contractors, it is a must that all on skill labor is sourced from the community. Skill labor is open to all, but even with that, we prioritize our host communities. And currently, 63% of our contractor employees are from the host communities. So, what is the way going forward for us as Anglo Gold Ashanti? Everybody have been, has been thinking about what benefits will Obuasi bring to the people of Obuasi. And we 
as a business, our credibility is on the line. And so we are doing our possible best as we drive production. We want to ensure that the benefit actually translates down. And so we want to continue to engage our stakeholders. We are all the time finding creative ways to engage our stakeholders to ensure that we are close to them, they understand what we are doing, and their concerns are addressed. We want to continue to manage community complaints. One of the things that you would have to know, um, coming from the engineering background, it's actually an ISO requirement in the extractive or in business that your stakeholder complaints have to be managed. You have to have a robust system to manage their complaints. So you don't throw them, somebody come and report to you, and then you to know it is not acceptable. So we want to, currently we have 100% closure rate, and it's something we want to maintain that all complaints we receive, we listen to them with a good heart, we investigate, and then we address them. 